Welcome everyone to another week of the Focus TV. We got Xavier White here, Cardell Dudley Jr. I'm Wilson Tarpe Jr. And, uh, look, man, season seven, episode 36. The last little bit of the quiet period before everything's back in play for the most part. WNBA, as you guys know, um, they just had an all-star weekend this past weekend, which means the Olymp Olympic break. Um, so won't have any mystic news until like I think August, the week of August 13th. That comes back. That said, there will still be some women's basketball updates as the Olympics begin this week. Uh, and then obviously, you know, we <laughs> told Octavia before this started, you know, that NFL training camps will be back up by next week. Everyone will have reported. But today we're going to start with uh, just getting some final thoughts on Summer League. Now that's wrapped up. Congrats to the Miami Heat who won this year's uh, Summer League championship. Um, Cardell, I'll start with you then, Octavia, in terms of just players that stood out uh, in Summer League for you. And, uh, you know, we just go around sharing some some names, and I'm sure some people have some similar names before we move on. Uh, yeah, we can start, on, we can start with the Heat. Uh, Khalil Ware, you know, talked about him leading up to the draft, you know, how athletic he is, how tough he is, and older and all that. And I think they, you know, for the Heat, they got to steal. Uh, Bam is a hell of a player, you know, all NBA, all star caliber player, defender, but he's only 6'9. He's like an undersized big holding it down in a paint at the five. Bel Air, 6, 11, 7 feet, athletic, um, uh, rim protecting and all that stuff like that. I think in the Miami Heat culture, where they preach professionalism, work ethic, and, and, and handling your business, all the worries and concerns about him heading into the draft, I think that would become non existent because. He gonna have, and you know how it is. You either buy in or you get out. You know, it's as simple as that down there. You know, what I mean? and, and, and but if you buy in, you become that much better. You understand what it's what it takes to be a professional. And I don't think it's gonna take him long to make an impact um, and, and help that club because you know if he, you can see the potential throughout summer league. If he reaches his potential quickly on that front line with Bam, it, it gets ugly. It gets ugly fairly quickly. And, and what I've been saying. Pretty much for the last year, you're going to need multiple bigs to rumble. You know, you, you you have to. And they would have their multiple bigs to be able to rumble in the East. They have to show up their little perimeter and their guard place, so to speak. But, um, you know, definitely that. But Kelly Aware, yeah, man, I, I love his impact and what he's done throughout Summer League. I think he's going to, I think he's going to have a, you know, he stay healthy. He's going to have a hell of a, uh, you know, rookie year. Uh, obviously, Reed Shepard, I think he played extremely well, validated his number three pick uh, for the Houston Rockets. They already have a young core that's that's bubbling. They ready to burst, you know what I'm saying? Get to that next level, kind of what Met where Memphis was a couple of years ago before all the you know incidents and stuff like that. I think they're kind of right there, ready to take that next step. And uh you got a kid that can help you eventually. He can knock down threes, he can run point, he can play off the ball, tough, understands how to play. Uh he had a hell of a summer league, man. Hell of a summer league. Uh you know, and I think he's gonna come right there and make an impact right away. You know, um, on that young mob, and I mean, I'm eager to see how him and Alperen Sagoon how their chemistry clicks because when he can shoot the ball, facilitate everything, he's he's gonna make life a lot easier for him. And uh, and also defensively, Alperen Sagoon, you know, he's not the most stout of defenders, but with Reed out there, he ain't got to worry about switching on the guards no more and all that. He can just stay at home with the big. It's, it's a breath of fresh air. So, you know, guards not going to be turning the corner as quick because, you know, Reed going to be fighting. So, you know, man, it, it's going to be good to see all that. Obviously, uh, hometown, a couple of local products did well. You know, Bub, you know, I think he was the most consistent out of all the rookies for the Wizards by far. Uh, you know, even when he shot the ball bad, he still made an impact in other areas, rebounding, assist, defense, uh, energy, just competing. You know, I think he did well. Also, Jordan Miller from Virginia played at George Mason before he uh, went out to Miami and, uh, and ended up being all ACC player and, and, and developed, killed with the Clippers. You know, I think he's a you know un, un, underrated kind of you know addition for that roster, so to speak, this year that people won't be paying attention to. But uh, if he, he get the minutes and stuff like that, I think he can make an impact and, ha and wake people up because he has all the tools and the size and athleticism to, to do so. Uh, you know, and, you know, Jalen Wilson, who uh, made he won MVP out of Brooklyn, I think he had outstanding summer league. The Brooklyn's in rebuilding mode, so it's ample opportunity for young players to make their mark. 
just a hell of a star for Jalen. You know, with his summer league, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be trying to put him in the mix. You know, to feature him a lot more with this upcoming season. Uh, it's interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see how they play that. Jamie Jack is Jack is uh, that we talked about with the Miami Heat. That's last year's rookie. Now you got Keller where you got him. People kind of tend to forget about him because you when you think about the Heat, you just go to Jimmy and Bam first. You know what I mean? But now you add, you know, Jimmy Jazz because he, he can he could possibly take another leap. You know what I'm saying? And then if he take another leap, that changes a lot. You know what I'm saying? Because you got him, you got Harold, you got you got Jimmy, Kelly Ware, Bam. You know, you you got some young pieces uh surrounding Jimmy as you know the veteran and stuff like that that can that can they can get it going. And you know, toughness will never be an issue with the Heat. So that can kind of get them back in the mix and you know in the playoff mix, so to speak. And uh, you know, look, I'm a, you know Donovan Clinton, and you know Portland, you know, your, your, your UConn guy, like he just rim protection, defense, understands how to play, strong as hell. You can see it. NBA ready, man. Tough, you know, ready to make an impact right away. And that's why I felt like that was a great pick for Portland. But he's with such a young team, you trying to trying to keep up with the powers of the West, so to speak. You have to draft like that. You have to draft guys that's ready. You can't do potential no more. Uh, because you probably won't be around to even see that potential for fulfilled, even if it is fulfilled. So, uh, you know, I like what Chance doing. He's getting ready made talent now, they can come in and contribute, you know, and I expect big things again. He he sees what I see, you need to be. And the thing with him and uh, DeAndre Ayton, you got hella size and hella skill and athleticism, you got it all. So, that that's a hell of a tandem that you got to deal with out west, you know what I'm saying. Um, and, and you know, and one that should be formidable sooner than later. All right, Octavia, any final thoughts you have to some of the leagues in terms of anybody stood out to you? Yeah, I think I mean I think Cardell covered a lot of the 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 people that did very very well in the summer league. Um, the the games that I did watch, I did watch some of the Wizards games, and like you kind of stated with Bub Carrington, especially with the if you want to call it subpar play of the number two pick and Alex Sar, which. Again, I never really read too much into summer league as it is, um, but Bob Carrington, you know, I think he had a really decent uh, showing, especially with Sar not playing well. You know, Wizards fans kind of like to jump off the cliff, um, understandably, with everything that's happened in the Wizards' past in the last couple of years. But um, a cool stat that I looked at was Bob was the only lottery pick. Um, in Vegas to finish top five in scoring, rebounding, and assists, and shot 35.9% from deep. Um, so it shows you that he's off to a good start. It definitely solidifies his pick. Um, and hopefully it turns out to be a well pickup for the Washington Wizards because um, we know, you know, they've had some issues with picks. And then I was also going to talk about Donovan Klingon. When you talk about pairing him with the youth that's in Portland and Shaden Sharp and Scoot Henderson, um, uh, the other guard that's still there, I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head. And then, like you said, also with DeAndre Aiden, and we talk about a lot how important it is to have not just one big person, but multiple big guys. Um, so to have him kind of show a little bit that you can tell that he learned a lot at um, UConn, um, how to go out there and be a pro, um, it's going to be very interesting to see that because, you know, the West, I feel like, always gets that youth movement, movement and it kind of sneaks up on you. Not to say that Portland is going to be, you know, in the mix, but they have a lot of good youth. And it's just if they're going to be able to kind of hone it all in um, and do something with it. But I have a lot of faith in Chauncey Billups. He's a great basketball mind. So I'm very interested to see what he's able to do with them. Um, and, yeah, like you said, I think I would have liked to see some people play a little bit more like we always talk about. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more Zach Eady because I think his couple of games in the beginning were a little eye-opening. Um, you know, a lot of people weren't sure if he'd be able to kind of run. Um, and he looked he looked well in the beginning, so just making sure that he continues to do that. Um, and then, of course, Stephon Castle, you know, didn't get to play much with the broken uh, wrist. Um, so hoping that, you know, he's able to – get better and be able to contribute in some type of way this year. Uh, all right. Um, I'm sure some of these, you guys were going to mention several of the same names, but uh, I started with the same one. You started with uh, Cardell and as you being shouted out in it, because I, I do remember that short list when you're talking about Kalel and you mentioned him to me prior to that as well. Someone just to look at. Um, yeah. It was one of those things, you know, when we talked about like uh Wimby pop or a castle film with the Spurs, like I think, where landing with Miami was the perfect thing for him 
Um, as you alluded to, the things that were perceived as negatives, <laughs> guess what, man? From day one, <laughs> I wish you would. You know what I'm saying? Like Miami just, you, you're not even afforded the luxury of being a kid anymore and playing around because they'll just grown up that stuff out of you upon you landing. Like it's accelerated real quick. Um, I thought he was really, really good for Miami. I thought he got acclimated quick. And as it went on, he got more and more comfortable and more and more efficient. And obviously, like you mentioned, what it does for Bam and Jimmy. Um, you mentioned how Mayhawk is. They got uh, one of the many Nikolas in the league. Nikola Jovich is over there. And now you got Khalil Ware. Like, they have a, they got several young pieces where if those guys can take a step forward, they help the older folks. Problems. Like, and that's all size. Everybody we mentioned has plus size for their position. Jaime is a wing. He has really good size for a wing. Uh, Kaleo, that's, you said six eleven seven foot. That's plus size. That's a big, all right? Jovic is a really big, whatever the hell he is. 6'10", was 6'9", 6'10"? I'm not sure if he's 6'11", or whatnot, but he, he's up there. And he got a lot of run last year um, for Miami during regular season games. And that's the type of stuff that does matter um, for young, for, for, uh, for youngsters, um, just getting those minutes and some of those, you know, the quote unquote Tuesday night games with that aren't on TVs. Uh, look, man, those are great minutes for kids. And, and that'll lead me to another kid where he got minutes last season because Memphis was going through what they were going through. I thought Gigi Jackson was fine. Um, burst on the scene last year during a regular season, again, um, getting minutes wasn't expected to, because whatever happened in Memphis happened, it is what it is. He benefited from it, and shout out to him. Those, that's what you're supposed to do when given opportunities. Not your fault the franchise has had that type of year. But you're supposed to, when given the opportunity, take advantage of it. And he did, and I was eager to see. And I didn't think this would happen, but eager to see, because it could go one or two ways. You get, you get good minutes, uh, get some good rotation minutes, however they may come. The summer league comes, and some people act like they're too cool for school, don't play in summer league, or feel like they arrived, and DG came in, who did what he was supposed to. And look, I, I don't think it's gonna be a shock if we see him become a piece in the Grizz Young front court. Um, obviously, not a small word, but just a, a cog in their front court, which doesn't hurt. Uh, Cam Whitmore, look, man, ain't nothing really to talk about too much with that. Shouldn't be seeing him in summer league anymore. That whole will revisit that that year, that draft last year, or will be a year that will be revisited uh, as the future goes on, as he continues to uh, accelerate. Um, in his NBA career. Um, but yeah, uh, for some folks, it looks like mistakes were made, but that's not Houston's problem. You know, shout out to the Rockets. Uh, as you mentioned, Cardella, they get, they're bubbling and ready to go. Um, as for some other rooks, I already mentioned Bub Carrington. Um, I like the, uh, along with Bub, thought he was fine. You guys touched on everything with Bub. I literally have nothing to add. Uh, Octavia, shout out to you for that, that stat. That's a great stat that I wish Wizards fans would take and kind of just bookmark it and keep it and just read it three times a day in Wusa. Life is going to be fine. Um, uh, the two uh, the two youngsters the Wolves got uh, in Dillingham and Shannon. Um, look, man, opportunities to go snag a rotation spot. Those guys are going to get valuable minutes all through the year if they seize the opportunity. And guess what? Come the postseason, can't load up on Minnesota the way that you loaded up on it before. And that's the interesting thing because that's why – this time of year, letting the kids play in summer league, letting them get their feet wet, let them get their feet wet on those boring again. Sorry for Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, whatever. And in the association, it matters for those youngsters. So by playoff time, those are they've been getting rotation minutes all year. You just got to get comfortable with the with the playoffs, but you've been comfortable in the association. I thought that was great to watch them. You touched on Reed Shepard, good pick, man. Early returns on that investment immediately. You see why it was done, and for Houston, you got to be happy. Cardell, you laid out all the reasons why, so I am not going to uh, – I'm going to skip past my notes on why. I enjoyed the little I did see uh, Steph Castle um, just because I saw some of y'all bad mouth him for no reason before the draft came up, um, and I'm going to be on y'all neck for the duration of his career, for the record. Um, also, I thought Ken Spencer was solid in Memphis. Uh, obviously, a lesser role because you know what you're going into. Uh, college uh, – uh, the NBA is not college – you got to get in where you fit in, but I thought he's productive in his role. They asked you to shoot the ball, play solid defense, move the ball. He did those things. We'll see what that leads to. But I, I, I'm appreciative for him being able to do that. Everybody can't sometimes. You guys mentioned uh, a big clinging. 
Yeah, Portland got to be in love with that already. Um, we're in a time where all bigs don't like to be big. He's a big that likes to be big. It's, it's, a, it's a positive thing um, for sure. Uh, T. New has some work to do. League is a league. Uh, Reese Ache, limited time. Enjoy seeing him for Atlanta. I'm Tyler Kolick on the Knicks. Thought he was solid. Um, interested to see where that goes if you get into the into the winter. Um, I like the pace he plays with, but uh, again, again, you know, just quite shout out to the Knicks front office. Been acting brand new the past couple of years, uh, but those are just some of the names. And again, um, happy that some of these over because it means we're on to other things. But that means the Olympics are coming up. It is Olympic year, which I mentioned Olympic break earlier. I tell you, we start with you. Just talk about some of the things that you are looking forward to seeing at the Olympics that literally start this week. I mean, honestly, for me, I love the Olympics just because I get to watch so many different sports that you really don't get to see outside of the Olympics. Um, of course, I'm, I'm excited to see Simone Biles um, with her comeback after the last time in the Olympics when she had to pull out due to her having what they call the twisties. Um, watching her get ready for the Olympics and all of the meets that she had going up into it. She's been amazing as she's always been. So I'm excited to see her back on the, on the, uh, back in the gym. Um, always looking forward to track and field, seeing what Shakari is going to do, seeing what uh, Noah Lyles is going to do as well. Um, of course, you know, basketball, men's five on five. I've uh, been watching all of the um, exhibition games that they've had coming up. Unfortunately, I didn't get to watch the females ex exhibition game today, which I heard was a blowout. So I don't really feel like I missed anything. <laughs> um, so uh, definitely those are always going to be your top. Um, but there's always like small other ones that like just the weirdo sports fanatic in me like really want to see like I recently like I, I, in the Olympics, like I really like water polo. It's kind of weird, but it's very interesting. Um, but stuff like that, like the diving. Um, and then also apparently, and I just learned this like probably a couple of days ago, like there's going to be break dancing in the Olympics this year. Um, I just want to see it, to be fair. Like, I, I want to see, like, how y'all going to score this? Like, what's going to happen with break dancing being in the Olympics? It's kind of wild to me that that's where we are. But, hey, I mean, it is what it is. But all in all, like, I just love the Olympics, especially in this time of period where, like, usually every year this is kind of like the law where – you're in between like exciting sports. I, I I don't mean to say that in a negative way about baseball because we know baseball is going on. But to me, baseball doesn't get excited until October. Um, but this is like that law where after the Super Bowl in February, after the finals in June, you really have from June to around this time, you at least get training camp for NFL. Um, so I love it when we're in a Olympic cycle where we get to see so many different athletes that have trained and stuff that I probably would have never been able to see if I didn't watch the Olympics. So I'm really looking forward to all of it. Carter, what you got your eye on for this Olympic uh, cycle? I mean, you know, obviously the the men's basketball and women's um, basketball team, man, been looking a little shaky, you know, seeing them, you know, seeing that some of the world's, I'm not even going to say they're the best, uh, in the middle of the pack, like Canada, so, so so to speak, and then you know the teams that are trying to come up, the countries that are trying to come up, you know, you see them giving them problems, and they, and you can tell those they they are playing hard, but they haven't unleashed everything. You know, they trying to wait until it really matters, so to speak. Uh, so it's interesting to see the U.S. kind of struggling, and then um, but they haven't had Kevin there as well. You know, obviously when Kevin get there, it'd be different. You know, so we'll see. But regardless, with or without Kevin. They have everybody there and they're struggling. Um, and they've had they haven't got to the, the big dogs yet, the Spain, the Lord knows France. Uh that that's gonna be that's gonna be a mother. That's gonna be a mother right there, dog. Like yeah, they don't want Wimby aim and go bear inside, no layups, champ. Like uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's gonna be interesting, man. It, 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 it's really gonna be interesting, man, because uh you can see the USA. The one thing they've been struggling with is the physicality. Yeah, they use the NBA BS, and 
You, you see John B trying to draw fouls and he getting bumped and falling to the ground. Refs looking at him like, get your big ass off the ground, run back down, boy. You know what I'm saying? And, and they, you know, they, they got to adjust. They got to adjust, man. So uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see that. Uh, you know, and, and I'm one of the guys that's just trying to see all the all the sports, so to speak. Um, but you know, I'm I'm also interested on the track and field side. I want to see what the young bull from the, from the home from Maryland going to do. The youngin, uh, you know, uh, you know, Quincy Mess, my uh, Quincy Wilson from Bullets, man. You know, he's like the youngest track and field Olympian ever. You see what I'm saying? Like he's still at Bullets, <laughs> still a student. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what he's gonna do on that stage and you know represent. I love seeing locals, you know, do their thing because it you know shines light on the entire area, man. You know, and, and it, you, it just make you proud to be from here. And for young and to kind of already kind of be setting his mark in the track and field world, I think he broke records in the 400 meter. He's like the in the uh, 18 and under. Yeah, he broke the the world record in the 18 and under. 400 meters twice already <laughs> you see what i'm saying like uh, he's a phenom so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that uh you know the swimming you know who's gonna pick up the mantle you know what i'm saying michael phelps not there no more who's, who's who's the next one i'm eager to see that man so yeah like i'll tell you said man i'm just a fan of all this stuff man who's going to emerge and make a name for themselves man because yeah, I don't care what nobody say. Olympics is, is especially individual sports. That's one of the most grueling things. You train hard for four years, and it guarantees nothing. And your whole livelihood is dependent on upon you doing well at the Olympics. So if you don't medal or something like that, it, 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 you know how I go. They looking for the next one. It's gonna be tough. Or you gotta get back on the world championship grind and try to prove it there. You know, try to redeem yourself, man. You only get so many chances because it's every four years, and there's only so many years an athlete has, man. So, you know, I'm definitely interested in just seeing the overall competition, man. Nah, for sure. Uh, I just finished watching the sprint with the wife on Netflix. I'm already, I already watch track and field like everybody does. Um, every Olympics, like sprinting is my sole focus of it. No disrespect to the other distance running events. Not gonna lie, like I'm happy for everyone that does well. I'm locked in furthest uh length that I pay attention to is after the 200s. I start tuning stuff out, but as you said, shout out to Quincy Wilson though. Um, you're a kid racing with grown folks, with grown folks, man. Um, it's gonna be crazy. Um, again, track and field, you mentioned basketball already. Yeah, definitely got my eyes seen on what the what the men are gonna end up doing. I'm just ready to watch France, man. I want to watch how the rest of the world deals with that. And obviously, we know they they don't have everybody because the hatchlings aren't there yet either. Like, this is France kind of like as they're gonna continue to grow. Um, and also it's gonna be it's gonna be on a whole different level, like they're hosting. Like everybody that plays them, like they're hosting, you gotta deal with that. It's gonna be nuts, man. Um then obviously, like you said, basketball on the men's and women's side, uh, swimming, as you both mentioned, then gymnastics. Um, definitely interested in the three on three basketball just because it's a different game, um, different pace, are also fun. Uh beach volleyball during the Olympics is hilarious to me. Um, and then diving, also fun just because you can watch as a viewer and think somebody did something great, and then wait till them scorecards come up and find out what you thought was great was the worst dive in the world. It goes to what Cardell was just saying. They've been training for the previous three years. And that that last two puddles, that 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 little ripple just cost them everything. Like mm -hmm. literally cost them everything. And it's by the smallest margins. And it's, as you guys said, like um from a competitive standpoint, man, it's, it's it's all the marbles and some and then throw for your country on top of it. It's crazy. Just just have to love it from a competitive period. Um, a competitive standpoint. So uh, definitely looking forward to locking and catching as much as uh, possibly can this Olympic cycle. All right, uh, Carter, we're going to move on to take it or leave it. Uh, where are we starting this week? Yeah, we're going to start on the Olympic side. Um, U.S. men's Olympic basketball team. Obviously, they went undefeated in the exhibition tune-up ahead of the Paris Games, but they were missing one key star, Allegedly six foot eleven, <laughs> Kevin Durant. 
Uh, Durant has set out teams USA preseason games due to a day-to-day calf injury. I mean, injury, uh, having strained his calf before the start of the training camp in Las Vegas on July 6th. Uh, Team USA is set to play Serbia um, in their Olympics Group C opener on July 28th, which will give the 14-time All-Star less than a week to return to the court. Uh, ESPN and Brown Winhurst recently said he doesn't think Durant will feature in Team USA matchup against Serbia. Durant's longtime agent, Rich Clymer, made the differ. Uh, He commented by saying, uh, not true. Durant is the all-time scoring leader for the U.S. men's Olympic basketball team. Obviously, as we've been talking about, he's been sorely missed during the exhibition games. Uh, Team USA has went 5-0, but barely got out got out of wins with South Sudan and Germany within the past week. And uh, without LeBron James' clutch performances, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, Durant previously helped Team USA take home gold in the last three Olympics and could become the first men's basketball player to win four gold medals in the Olympic history take it or leave it that he plays against serbia in the olympic opener octavia i'm gonna take it i think he's gonna play i think they didn't keep him out all this time for him not to play um i think they've just been cautious i I mean when he's healthy we know the type of player that he is and that's probably just what's gonna be up so yeah i think he'll play um how well he'll play don't know um, because of course the injury is still going to be nagging. Um, uh, but I think he's going to play. Um, I don't foresee him missing the Olympics at this point because I felt like if he wasn't going to play, it would have been something maybe similar to what Kawhi Leonard did and bow out. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to play. I think he's definitely going to give it a go. I'm just interested to see how healthy he really is because we really haven't seen anything since the first. Um, round of the playoffs um, so he's been off for a while so that is slightly concerning that he's still having this huge nagging injury that didn't even allow him to get a couple of reps in the uh, five exhibition games that they played but they have had you know their last game was Sunday um, or Monday one of those I think it was Monday I'm sorry so they have this whole week because um, they don't play again until Sunday so he has a lot of time off and so a lot of time for them to practice um, so I, I think he'll play. Um, just wondering how well he'll play and how much he'll play. Wilson. Um, I'm I'm probably leaning towards taking it just because, like, you know, people and phones and footage and everything else, like, um, all I've seen during the summer he's been hurt is the post-practice work and things of that nature. Um, not, you know, him with his leg up or him wrapped up or not moving or not seeing him or anything like that. I just think, I think maybe it was a tweak or something precautionary. And honestly, like, uh, you know, you got to be careful because remember the last time that he had a calf strain, unfortunately, uh, what that ended up being, uh, obviously. But uh, I would think uh, that I'm leaning towards taking it um, for sure. And then as well as how good he's going to play, I don't know, man. I don't put anything past him. The last time this happened, he was going for a while and then, Almost had Canada on tilt before re-injuring him, you know, re-injuring himself um, after not really playing. Um, but I just think even if he gives it a go, or he's around. Like I think it'd be a boost for the guys, but they need to get their act together regardless. Um, you know, but like that's, uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I'm with y'all. Um, but it is the only thing is we don't know which calf it is. Um, and that cap could be connected to the one where he blew out his, you know, his Achilles and stuff like that. That's the only thing I'm kind of like looking at where it's like they're being very, very cautious because um, you know, obviously with his age and, you know, another blow in that area, it, it could be it, you know, it might be it, you know what I'm saying? So I think they kind of monitoring that. But like what I said, you see the clips and stuff, he's looking like himself. Um, you know, it's hard to see him not playing in that. But if he didn't, then that, that to me, that's kind of calls for a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's just all right, some, some they right. You know what I mean? But they're going to need him because I think he's the only one where he can get get a bucket any time. I think because of the physicality of the other guys, they're, they're going to struggle. Like LeBron, and we're going to talk about him in a little bit, he's been coming through because he's the main one with the physicality and the skill late in the games to make something happen. 
where all the other players, they kind of missing one or the other. Where Kevin, because of his height and his skill sets being so high and everything, it, he could just post, he could just get to the elbow and just, it, it's nothing you could do. So uh, he's the X factor, you know what I mean? And he's something where, you see what I'm saying? And, you know, he, he he's the ultimate scoring machine. He's been the best scorer in the league for 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 ages so you know it is what it is man but my two cents we were talking about the leg my bad it's that one opposite the achilles the one opposite of it okay. yes his left one he tore his right achilles so that's why when the post is up you can see the sleeve underneath yeah. the sock on this one yeah. yeah okay i see all right then then yeah he should definitely be able to play unless it gets aggravated or something like that so we should be good to go um like I said, we're gonna be talking about LeBron. Uh, he had to step up, came to the rescue twice. Uh, an American showed an excellent Germany squad for much of the second half of their pre-Olympic exhibition on Monday, and wound up pulling out a 92-88 win for the second game in a row. LeBron had to step up to save Team USA from the loss. Over the last four minutes of the contest, James was everywhere. Uh, he went on a pretty much yeah, he went on an 11-0 run. Uh, we're not 11 0 right? He scored Team USA's final 11 points, uh, going four for four from the field, grabbing three rebounds and snatching one steal. Uh, it was a great showing uh, from the all time great. Uh, he finished with a team high 20 points, six rebounds, four assists, and one steal, and a block in 18 minutes. He went eight of 11 from the field to a two three point range. Uh, two part question take it or leave it that LeBron is not only just the best player on the Olympic team currently, but Still can make a case for being the best player in the game, Wilson. Uh, I'm gonna leave it. Um, great job closing those two games, you know. I not to take anything away from him in that, um, one they shouldn't be in that situation. But another thing to keep in mind, I know a lot of times when people think it's Team USA, they think about all the you know, the, the, the amalgamation, the talent, and everything. All of them don't play, play FIBA basketball, mm -hmm. like a lot of them have little to no experience. And this, while LeBron has been a while, he's had two cycles of Olympic basketball already, though. I believe, unless I'm wrong. I think he had two cycles already, right? Because they had the time with him, Wade and Melo. Oh, off the bench. oh, eight. Then the Redeem team. At 12. And that was it. I don't think he played in 16 and 20. Right. He didn't play those times, but he had – so that's three cycles already. He's had three three, uh, three cycles of experience with – he can he can call back or reference – the physicality needed for this level, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the other folks can't like like this is different. You got Joel, you talk about Joel, like, and this is why some of us old man yell at clouds, you complain it during the regular season because that crap becomes a habit. Then you get in this situation, you, it's hard to all of a sudden flip a switch and not do the crap you've been doing for three years, the 82 game season of the BS, where you live instead of playing basketball, you're playing for fouls. What I can tell you is the FIBA refs don't care. That's the funniest part to me. Um, some of them playing and looking for foul calls. Refs like, hey, man, they on a break. You should get back. <laughs> that's that's crazy. You're here talking to me. Um, so, I mean, I just think there's a lack of experience from that standpoint. I think people have to have, uh, like, just um, keep in mind, like, with this Ant's first time up, um, uh, well, I think this is book second time. Yeah. Uh, the only three, the only, not to cut you off, the only three players that don't have like FIBA experience, Olympic experience is Derek White. You just said uh, Joel Embiid and Tyrese Halliburton on this team, on this current team. Everybody else has USA experience. All right, my fault. So, so they play USA basketball period, or, or we're talking about Olympic experience. Olympic experience, uh, or they played in like the World Championship, which is still the same thing as FIBA. Right, it's not necessary Olympic. Right. All right. So in that regard, for those three is different than for the other folks to that point. You got to step up. Um, credit to LeBron for getting the job done. But um, so the mother older folks, you, you got to do your part. But shout out to him for getting uh, for getting things done. I'll tell you. Yeah, I'm going to leave it, too. But also kind of like what Wilson said, like, I'll be honest, like when the game was at the end of the Sudan game, I was like, well, LeBron going to pass it. <laughs> but he didn't. So I was like, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna leave it on the best. I mean, he's 
one of the greatest players that's ever played. Like, but I do think that a lot that's happening is number one, they don't play together a lot. And I think a lot of them are, are either unconsciously or consciously, um, can't even get my word out, are, are heeding to LeBron. Like they're, they're giving him, I don't want to say giving him more opportunities, but they're letting him take the reins. Not saying that the not saying that the other ones could do it and, and take over the way that he has in the last couple of games. But I feel like they're deferring to him a lot more. Um, I think they're giving him a lot more opportunities because he does prove that he can do it. And like Wilson has always also uh stated that he has a lot of FIBA experience, a lot of Olympic experience as well. Um, but I kind of feel like they see this as his swan song, his, you know, his goodbye tour or beginning of it or whatever, because I think he's already come out and said this is his last Olympics. He's not playing it anymore, which, duh, makes sense. He's 40. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a little bit of that. Um, but at the same time, like, he did what needed to be done, you know, in order to go through and win those games for them because the Sudan game was very close. Um, and then for him to step up in the last game as well against Germany – so I, I do think that he's playing well, like he's always done. But would I stop and say that he's the number one guy in the league? Probably not. Not currently. He's still up there. We know that. Um, but, yeah, I would, I would leave it in this situation. But he has, I mean, I'll say he surprised me in those games because I really thought he was going to pass the ball like we've seen him do. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. I think people just – lack perspective these days and you know what i mean it, it should never have to come to the wire at this time you know, against kind of like the B level competition of Olympic basketball, outside I say maybe Germany or Serbia, one of those two teams. But if uh, you want to go to Germany, we also got to keep things in perspective. At his position, <laughs> to get the win, who was guarding him, you know, he would have to deal with Isaac Maga. Franz Wagner, who's a pretty good player, obviously from from Orlando, no doubt, but not somebody that can guard LeBron. He's not as strong. Uh, Andreas Ops, you feel what I'm saying? Like, come on now, you know, you know. Look, I'm just throwing it out there. He did what he should do against those type of players. They not they not strong enough, they're all experienced enough to deal with them. You see what I'm saying? So, matter of fact, like even Franz Wagner. When the Magic play the Lakers or something like that, they're probably putting like Suggs or somebody on them. You see what I'm saying? Or, or, or Jonathan Isaacs or somebody on them. They're not putting him on them. So they, they're not trying to bang it. That's what he did. Like I saw one play, Dennis Schroeder had a switch on him, and he just back, and he just slowly backed him down and all that. That tells you all you need to know. So, yes, you put a little small – I mean, it's mismatches for him because one thing – um, with him, the physicality definitely won't bother him. You see what I'm saying? So he just got to get to the spots and make the play. So, uh, you know, hell of, look, hell of a last two uh, – the clutch play in the last two games, hell of a sequences, man. They 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 were. Can't knock it at all, man. But they look shaky, though. That's all I'm saying. They looking shaky. And they're going to have to deal with them hit, those hitters sooner or later because see if that was France, wouldn't be none of those layups going on. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, and all of all them USA players that was talking trash throughout the season about a certain center in Minnesota and all that, y'all, the world will see why he gets paid the way he does. And the worst part is he got a hitter, a young hitter on the backside that's going to help him. That's what gets scary. Now, the only thing with the, the thing, if you look at the rosters on all, all the Olympic team, it's like – Half of the team is strong enough to rock with the U.S., but then it's like the other part is like, ah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Certain teams got strong front courts. You're like, yeah. But then you look at the guards, you're like, yeah. <laughs> or they got strong guards. Like, yeah. Then you look at this in front. Ah, sh- it's going to be bad. That's what the U.S. got. But that's what's alarming because it's like, y'all got to manage in most nights in some area, and they take you to the brink already. So 
But I do agree with Octavia. Chemistry, it takes time. But you would think a collection of these players this night playing against each other. These ain't some young boys. The chemistry would be a lot better from training camp and all that by now. So, you know, look, we, we, it's interesting. We're going to see. But don't don't let that L happen, dog. It's going to be like, Lord Jesus, see? It's, it's, it's going to be bad, especially in the negative space we are in on social media, man. But, I'll, but it's on you, Wilson. Oh man, um, <laughs> yeah, if that L happens, this country's not going to take it well on social media. Um, you might want to say that, <laughs> and like you mentioned, um, with France, like, uh, just a quick reminder, man, um, there's no three seconds, right? So, everybody that has smoked for Rudy, he ain't got to move, and man, it's homie, don't have to move out of there, and you could block the ball off the round, which is easy mm-hmm. for me. Um, <laughs> everything's catered to them, man. Um, that's crazy, man. Uh, look, man, um, we appreciate you guys this week. Um, we're going to see y'all next week with a lot more. We'll be talking about the Olympics. <laughs> the men's would have will have played a game by then. So I'm looking forward to see if it's a shaky type performance we're talking about, an actual early L, or was all this a bunch of nothing and, you know, you know health shows its way and they're, you know, they, they look like Team USA uh, of old. Or, and then, you know, We'll, we'll report back on the rest of the Olympics. And obviously, Octavia will be ready to go with some training camp news in the NFC East, man. We appreciate y'all. See y'all next week. Don't forget to get over to the FocusTV.com, especially during these Olympic, these Olympic cycle for men's and women's basketball. We'll have some stuff for you guys kicking up after games. Um, and then, obviously, Wednesday mornings, if you got a Roku television device as early as 9 a.m., all you got to do is t- uh, type in the Focus TV in the search box, double tap OK, and you will have added the channel for obviously this show and several others throughout the week. 